So through the magic of my virtual backgrounds, I now have the NASA logo here. So NASA is the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. It handles everything in the sky and in space. And it's an American agency, but the data that it creates is available all around the world for all countries to use. So the thing that NASA is most well known for is of course the space, the S in the NASA acronym. Um, but it doesn't just handle space. It also looks at the Earth, because of course the Earth is a planet. It's the planet that we know best and that we have the most information for. It's also the planet that we need to know the most about because we live on it. So let's have a look at the, some of the good things that NASA is doing to help us learn about our planet. This is an animation made by NASA to show one of its Earth observing telescopes at work. NASA satellites provide us with a lot of information that helps us to predict the weather, to watch how the Earth's climate is changing over time and lots of other things. The satellite being shown right here can map water, which can be used to predict how well farmers in different countries will do over the coming year, how many crops they can grow. It can also help us to predict crop failures if they're going to happen and the scary famines that can happen to people afterwards. Knowing that something like this will happen gives us time to prepare for it, which will hopefully keep more people safe. So, talking of keeping us safe, my favourite thing that NASA does is planetary protection. We're looking at all of the sky that we can and searching for asteroids that might hit Earth in future. Um, especially asteroids that would cause an extinction event like what happened to the dinosaurs. Because um, obviously we don't want that happening while we're alive because it didn't work out very well for the dinosaurs. So as well as looking at and searching for these asteroids so that we know if one is coming towards us, NASA is also working on how we could stop one hitting us. So this animation shows one NASA mission that is due for launch this year. It's called the DART mission, which stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. It takes a lot of careful planning and carefully done mathematics to work out what to do. But the end result is very dramatic we are going to crash a spaceship into an asteroid on purpose. The crash will push the asteroid and slightly change its direction. So I should make sure to say that this is a test. There is not an asteroid coming straight at us this year or next year. Um, we're just getting ready in case we identify an asteroid that could come close to Earth in the future. If the worst happens and Earth becomes a dangerous place to live, which could happen if there was a large asteroid impact or if our climate changes so much that it's, it's not safe for us to be here anymore, another thing that NASA is doing is looking elsewhere in the solar system and finding out where there might be other places that humans could live. And that's why there's a lot of Mars missions at the moment. Um, we're just going there to learn about it, learn about what resources there might be there. So things that we can use like water ice um, for drinking and for, for rocket fuel. Um, and this leads us on to the last question that we have. And that is, what would it be like to live on Saturn? The first thing that we can consider when we're trying to find out what it would be like to live on Saturn is the fact that it's much further away from the sun than the Earth is. As a result of being further away from the sun, it takes Saturn longer to go around the sun. A year on Saturn is about 29 Earth years. So on your 29th birthday on Saturn, you would be one Saturn years old. 
Another consequence of being further from the Sun is that the Sun would look much, much smaller in the sky from Saturn. You can see this picture taken from the Cassini spacecraft behind Saturn looking back towards the Sun. Saturn is really, really big compared to the Earth, but it's not very dense, which means the gravity is similar to Earth, so that we'd be able to jump as high on Saturn as we would on Earth. But as you can see from our Jumping Man animation here, we can't stand on Saturn. It doesn't have a solid surface that we can stand on, but it is surrounded by solid things. Its rings are made out of dust and ice particles that are small to the size of houses. And it also has a lot of moons. We're zooming in on one of those moons now, Titan. It's the largest moon of Saturn, and it has lower gravity than Earth, so we'd be able to jump higher. It also has a thick atmosphere, but it's very different from Earth. It's cold there. There's lots of ice on the surface, and there's cryovolcanoes. They're not like volcanoes on Earth. They don't have rock and lava. They have ice and water erupting out of them. So if you are living at Saturn, you're more likely to be living on one of its rocky and icy moons. And the view that you would have would be quite spectacular. You'd have the ring system to look at, and you'd have at least 60 moons to see in the sky instead of Earth's just one. So thank you ever so much for all of the questions. Um, I hope I've managed to, to answer all of them. And thank you ever so much, ACORN class. It's been lovely to talk with you. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person. Okay. Bye.